Hey everyone, it's Chris Huntley with the Rise to the Top, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to build a multi-million dollar website. Specifically, I'm gonna share with you the seven steps that I use to build and sell a website recently. Now, I'll admit that as an entrepreneur, I've had shiny object syndrome before, and I haven't put all the necessary resources into every project that I've taken on before. But there was one time when I really swung for the fences and went hard and I didn't miss. And that was with this one website property that I started about 10 years ago, insuranceblogbychris.com. It was something that I grew to 70,000 visits per month, 2,500 leads per month, and I had a very nice multi-million dollar exit from that site a few years back. Learned a lot along the way. I, then I started this property, creditknox.com. That was not quite as successful, but learned a lot there too. We built that in, uh, short period of time, less than a year and a half to about 40,000 visits per month. And that was in the credit score, credit repair space. So along the way, one of the key lessons that I've learned is that the company with the best product or service doesn't always win. Now this is great news for you because you don't have to necessarily have the best product or service or blog or podcast. So take for example, Coca-Cola, number one drink in the world. Is this really the number one drink in the world? Probably not, but they have the best marketing. McDonald's, number one restaurant in the world. Barefoot wine. Did you know that you can buy this for five bucks a bottle and that's the most sold wine by far in the United States? Is this the best wine? You don't have to be the best product or service. Uh, when the iPod came out in 2003, there was like a hundred other MP3 players on the market, which pretty much did the exact same thing as the iPod. And a lot of them were actually cheaper and held more songs. But there was something different, right, about the marketing that Apple did. And we all know it. And we can't always put our finger on it. But we know that it had to do more of the marketing than the product. And this is where the real great news is for us, right? You don't have to have the best product, service, podcast, or blog. So all you have to be is good at marketing. And these seven steps, I'm going to help you to do that. So this is a guy named Jesse Orozco. Uh, he was born in 1957 and started pitching in Major League Baseball in 1979 at the young age of 22 years old. Uh, all through the 80s, he was a really solid pitcher. As you can see here, if you know anything about baseball, really low ERAs in the ones, twos, and threes, the lower, the better for baseball. In the 90s, you can see he starts to slow down, higher threes, and 94, and in 99, he has a couple of really bad years. So now he's 43, he's just pitched a couple of his worst seasons of his career. And his, his agent comes up with a plan because they're thinking, all right, it's probably time to retire, right? So uh, he said, yeah, JC, look, you're old. Yeah, you have a hard time people getting, you have a hard time getting people out. But I looked at your stats and there's one thing that you do very well. Um, you actually face this guy pretty good. This is a guy named Barry Bonds, who if you don't know anything about baseball, he was a mega star for the San Francisco Giants. He batted uh, in the 2000 season, 306, hit 49 home runs, and he was actually on his way up to having even better seasons than that. That same year, in the year 2000, this is how the standings ended with San Francisco Giants winning first place and the Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Rockies, and Padres well behind them. Here's the thing, though. Jesse Orozco was one of only five pitchers in Major League Baseball throughout his career that held Barry Bonds to under a 190 average over his entire career. That's really good. That's really low, especially for someone who's a killer like Barry Bonds. So his agent thought, hmm, what are teams, you know, what are the teams that have to deal with Barry Bonds a lot? So you go back to the standings and you look, it's the Dodgers, the Diamondbacks, Rockies, Padres. In baseball, the teams that are in your division play you the most. So Here's what happened. Even though Orozco's skills had diminished, his agent had this genius idea to go to those teams and pitch, pitch him as the Bonds specialist. So Orozco played three more seasons in the most competitive baseball league in the world when he couldn't really get anyone else out, but he's able to play to the ripe old age of 46, well beyond his prime. 
And pretty much all they used him for was to play against the Giants in high leverage situations. It might be late in the game with guys on base and Barry Bonds was coming up. So he'd come in and his only job was to get out Barry Bonds. (laughs) Your job in your business is to be Jesse Orozco's agent and determine what are the skills that you have and how can you position yourself where people will see you as valuable. It's all about differentiating your business. So um, in my business, one of the first ways that I learned this on my website, Insurance Blog by Chris, was I wrote this article very early on. Uh, The the guy that helped me to start my website said, Chris, just write about the last 10 people that you helped. Well, I had helped this guy who had a heart valve replacement. He had been declined by two life insurance companies, and that was my business. He was a life insurance agent. And I helped him to get approved. So I wrote an article about how to get approved for life insurance with a heart valve replacement. And wouldn't you know it, a lot of people found that article. A lot of people don't search for that, but the ones who did, there wasn't other, you know, State Farm and Prudential and all the big guys in that in that space weren't writing about that. So they found me because I had specialized. So in your business, what's your version of of the heart valve replacement. You know, you want to double down on helping those people and they'll find you. So just to give you some more ideas on the life insurance space and things that I've seen. I've seen people target people with hazardous hobbies, maybe they're overweight, people who are in the military or cops or firefighters, divers, pilots, people who are, you know, older, so seniors, high net worth people. All these people have unique challenges related to life insurance. And, and I've seen people position themselves as the expert in those things. Todd Trestetter, he's a member of a longtime member of FinCon. Um, I've always loved that the, he differentiates by his voice. He says, look, I'm smart. I only want to work with smart people. So financial mentor is financial freedom for smart people. Now, now, the thing is, if you read through this and you're just an average Joe investor, you're not going to understand a lot about what Todd says. I mean, I, I was a former investment advisor rep, and I still have a hard time even understanding what he says. He's really for really smart people. Todd used to run a hedge fund, right? So in his tone and in his voice on the site, it's, it's really highly elevated. And so you could differentiate through that. Uh, it, a lot of people know Matt Vaniski, who owns Money Lab, and he has a different voice where he, he more is more casual and funny, and he cusses, and he's kind of vulgar and pretty freaking hilarious, and I love him. Um, but he's also this super smart business guy and blog guy, and I really enjoy reading his blog. So you can see the two different voices. So, so having a different voice is another way that you could differentiate yourself. How about you could differentiate yourself by what you stand for? Uh, a lot of people know that Tom's shoes, that, that for every shoe uh, pair that they, that they sell, they give a pair away to someone who needs a pair of shoes. And by the way, you can rip this off. Warby Parker, they just basically took the exact same, same strategy as, as Tom's and they do it with eyeglasses. So you can copy the model if you see someone else doing it. Okay. Uh, maybe you stand for something like Chick-fil-A where it's like wholesome family values. Who knows? In my case, I had a scholarship on my life insurance site and it was for it, it was for college students who had had a parent who had passed away with with no life insurance or with a low amount of life insurance. You can also differentiate by your expertise. So in my case, um, I besides besides, heart valve replacements and health issues, I found out that I could do a pretty good job by by talking about estate planning. And so then I would talk to CPAs and financial planners and, and attorneys, and I found out that I could get some good referrals that way. Uh, maybe, maybe what people know you by is that you have an enemy. So Apple has Microsoft. Microsoft has Apple. Dave Ramsey has whole life insurance, right? Uh, even Mucinex, they've got mucus, right? So it, you could be known by your enemy. I tried this. One of the funnier things that I tried on on my site was I I tried to create this like Mr. Death figure, and and his enemy, or, or, or that that made kind of the villain was death, right? So 
he he wants to cut off your family's future their their house and their and and their financial security and their college and the only there's only one way to stop him with life insurance so you can have an enemy all right so that's step one step two is what i call the autograph story uh, so now a lot of you guys are already doing some of the things that i've said here to differentiate yourselves um, but you aren't where you want to be yet. So you, you talk about your offers, but they sound the same as everyone else's. And the truth is a lot of businesses are just making noise, right? They, they might as well just flush their marketing dollars down the toilet. So the good news is there's this simple way that I call the autograph strategy to differentiate your business. So if you do this, you're going to generate more buzz for your business and for your offers, you're gonna create more leads and sales, and no one, I promise you, no one will be able to compete with you because the autograph strategy is something unique to you. If you can get this right, then you can dominate in your market, even if you don't have, say it with me, the best product or service or blog or podcast, right? So I'm a huge baseball fan. This is Tony Gwynn's signature. Uh, so Tony Gwynn was known for his signature laugh. Uh, he slapped the ball the other way. He's known for hitting 394 in, in 1994. That's the closest that anyone's ever come to hitting 400 since Ted Williams did it like 60 years ago or something. So um, he's a famous baseball player, Tony Gwynn. In fact, uh, the San Diego Brewer Pale Ale, they even made a beer named after Tony Gwynn in honor of him. It's called the 394. So what about you and your brand? You know, what do people think about when they think of your products or services? Uh, do they just think of oh, the financial guy or the financial gal or the, the gal who talks about finances on her podcast? So if, if that's what they think, you're toast, right? So you're no different than a thousand other professionals like you. You want to stand out. You want people to remem remember you over your competitors. So you need to be known for something like that 394 season or it's Tony Gwynn's signature autograph. We've got this big T and big G. I could, I could see this, this signature from uh, across the room and squinting my eyes and I know that that's uh, Tony Gwynn's signature. So in short, you need the autograph strategy. So this is a branding exercise where you'll stamp your unique signature on your products and services and processes with a name that you'll be so proud of that you might want to even slap a trademark on this thing. So here's some examples of the, the autograph story. You can autograph all of the following your business, uh, product and service offerings, your guarantee, your tagline, your plan, to, for people to work with you and and there's even more and I'll give you some examples of this so this is a guy named Curtis Ray who's killing it on TikTok look at this 1.3 million followers and his specialty is a is selling kind of a life insurance as an investment type of thing that I've heard of this a million times before. It's it's a universal life insurance policy that you that you try to gain cash value accumulation in, and you pull money out of it for uh, for retirement. But if he just said, "Look, I've got another you know index universal life insurance as a as a cash value investment opportunity," people their eyes would glaze over. Yours yours are probably glazing over as I just tried to explain it. But that's not what he sells. He sells something called MPI, and he's trademarked it. Well, what's MPI? It's basically what I just told you, right? But but he's he's trademarked the name. Um, here's another dude that now, yeah, I know that this guy looks like you know he's my 13 year old daughter's younger boyfriend, but he's actually a kid that he's married. He's in his 20s, and he's crushing it. With uh, his name's Caleb Williams. He's also in the the life insurance and financial space, and he has something called the and asset. And it's kind of similar to the last guy that I just showed you, Curtis, uh, where it has to do with investing in life insurance. But he doesn't say, I help people to invest in life insurance. If you do that, you're toast in this industry, right? He has the and asset. If you can create something that when, they, when you tell people what it is, if they have to say, oh, what's that? Then you're on the right path. All right, so Dairy Pure delivers fresh dairy products like milk and half and half and whipping cream. And you've probably seen some of their products at your, your local grocery store. Well, they have, they have kind of this unique autograph 
strategy where the, what they do is they have this trademarked thing uh, as part of their guarantee. It's called the five point purity promise. So and they slap this thing all over their website. It's a really cool marketing message. So they don't focus on, you know, what would you think people would be focusing on here is how great their products taste, right? Or, or how they'll get to the grocery stores fresh. No, they just focus 100% on quality in their messaging. So that's what their five point promises. And they're passionate about it. Like they put it all over the website. So how about you and your brand? Do you offer, let's say a 30 day money back guarantee, or maybe you make some bold guarantee or promise, name it, make it sound something unique, slap your autograph on that thing. Uh, maybe you have a three step plan. So you could, you could also give an autograph sounding thing to your plan. Uh, my brother-in-law is a chiropractor, Dr. Jeff Ring. Um, and he has this three-step process where it's nothing really out of the ordinary. It's just call to schedule, gentle treatment, enjoy feeling better, but we've named it. It's the move better, feel better plan. Um, you know, when he, when I first saw his site and he was just, he was just sticking to these three things, we rebranded it. And what I love about the name is that it gives a potential client just a little glimpse into like what life's going to be like after treatment, they're going to move better, they're going to feel better. And then we added imagery around it, right? Showing people who they're outside, they're lifting their arms, they're enjoying their lives. So do you want to stand out in a crowded market where everyone's just selling the same thing? They're all just cracking your necks. My brother does it. Lots of chiropractors can crack necks, but no one else has the move better, feel better plan. All right. How about maybe you have a crew can you name them? Uh, Darren Hardy, my wife works for him. He has his his uh, his crew is called the A Team. Uh, think of Best Buy; they have the Geek Squad uh, in San Diego, where I'm from. This company, ASI Hastings, they do heating and air, and they call their technicians the White Glove Guys. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can you can also have an autographed feeling crew. Uh, this is something where it, let, let's say you have a quiz or assessment. Don't just say it's the it's the your financial assessment. Give it an autographed feeling name. So, on one of my life insurance sites, we have the perfect match assessment. Um, here's one. The it's a biological age calculator. This is by EasyCalculation.com. Cool name. Um, okay, so you can also. You can also have an autograph strategy by your strategy. So this is a guy that created this called Brian Dean from Backlinko, and he has this strategy of how to how to create better resources than anybody else, and how to get backlinks to your website. Um, now, if he just called it, it's you know something like hey, this is a, just another backlinking strategy then it's just noise you're just making noise in a crowded space but he 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 said look you're going to slap light you're going to take someone else's page you're going to strap you're going to you're going to um, add like 50 stories on top of that so he calls it the skyscraper technique okay so what's the point of all this right it's number one it's intrigue and well, what's that, Chris? Well, that's your goal right there, right? Uh, two, it's exclusivity. It's 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 you're the only one who can offer that thing. In the credit space, there's a lot of people talking about uh, about the authorized user strategy. We call it the borrow a kidney strategy. So, if anyone was to search that in in Google, that the credit site that we built has the market on that. So that's what you want to do. Step three is you got to swing for the spent fences. You've got to make a splash with all the with all the articles and resources that you're building. So for example, some of the stuff that I built, I built calculators. This was a whole versus term life insurance calculator. This got me a lot of backlinks. I built this cool sorting tool. You can sort through the life insurance companies by their price and, and financial rating. Uh, and another calculator that tells you whether life insurance is a good investment or it's like, should I just put my money to save it elsewhere and instead of getting life insurance? Well, this did a calculation on that. I did quizzes, test your insurance IQ. I did a whole whole life insurance rebellion where I, where I got all these bloggers together in, in a movement. Um, 
the point is I'd much rather see you instead of, you know, writing 10 articles, I'd much rather see you put a lot of focus into a really cool movement or rebellion or, or awesome resource. Um, here's another one. It was 25 different ways to save money on life insurance. Most people are just doing like five or seven ways. What, you know, could you do a really long list, 50 ways to something or 101 ways to, to do this other thing, make a splash. Uh, I, I went after, you know, not just content, but I went after relationships. I, I got in with, with my buddy, Pat Flynn, and he was able to post a guest post for me, which did great things for me on his website. So go big, don't just go big with your content, but go big with the people that you're, you know, trying to befriend and good things will happen. Um, we, we've also found really good luck with statistic type pages and doing surveys uh, like like surveys uh, I, you've used a uh, we've used a service called pollfish p o l l fish.com where you can survey the whole united states like a thousand two thousand people and it's not that expensive and you put the results together and now you've got a really nice resource statistics those are also huge uh, journalists need statistics to to link to this will bring you traffic backlinks go big Swing for the fences with your content and your resource ideas, guys, and your relationships. Step four is some is my strategy that we call content wave. So you know how a wave works, like in a in a stadium where it goes around and around. This is the same strategy we use on on Credit Knox when it came to posting content. And if you really want to step up your content planning game, this is going to show you you know how to organize that into a plan that's going to get you results. So the first thing you want to write a couple conversion pieces. This might be something like a case study or a success or a don't do this story, maybe 10 things to know before you buy. So for example, five things to know before you buy life insurance. These are things that, that once you get people on your site, um, if you show them these articles as related articles, they're going to want to click through and stay on your site and, and uh, it'll be a better user experience for them. Uh, the penny hoarder does a great job at these. So, so again, this is a conversion piece. Here's how to add up to 200 points to a credit score without paying anyone for help. And they have these unique, they have these unique stories, testimonials from people who did it. So this guy raises points 277, he raises credit 277 points, single mom overcomes credit card debt and a bad credit score. So these are like the case studies, right? We did one with my brother who built the website, the credit site with us, how I raised my credit score over 100 points with Finger Hut. So these are your conversion pieces, right? Step two is you have your, your kind of just your standard evergreen SEO pieces. It's your pros and cons, and how much is it, and you know this company versus that company, and so on. So, um, so you know they're all articles, the conversion pieces, and then the SEO articles, um, and so the, those are the first two pieces that you need. But then you also need kind of a pillar piece or a power page, as some people, or epic content, as some people would would call it. Okay, so the third thing you do, you need is a power page. This could be like a calculator, like I said before. Um, I think the easiest ones to create are epic lists like this one, like 55 credit building secrets. And this was a super long page, probably like four or 5,000 words. You can also do a, you know, a roundup or crowdsource type thing, like 30 plus personal finance experts share their first credit card mistakes. Uh, okay, so here's what a completed content wave would look like for us. So we've got a power page and and a sales page, we have at least one conversion piece, and then we have a bunch of SEO articles. So here's how you would link it. All the articles link to the power page and the sales page, and then most of the time, most of them are gonna have like a related piece and link to the conversion piece. So the, you know, the power page also links to your, your call to action and usually down to some of your SEO articles. And um, once you're done going after a specific keyword, then you just start the wave all over again with a new keyword. So you might be able to use the same conversion piece and CTA, but you're going to just need new SEO articles around the new keyword and power page. And when you do this correctly, it sort of feels like this. Home run, bat flip. That's my man, Fernando Tatis Jr. All right. Segmentation. So here's how 
we've done it on our different websites, you can segment on your navigation menu. So when you were in the credit building section of our site, they'd, we would only show you credit related stuff in our navigation. We also had a tax section. If you're in our tax section, you can see the navigation completely changes. Now we're talking about IRS settlements, tax relief, even the CTA changes. So isn't that a better experience? Um, the sidebar. So on our auto loan section, we have auto loan CTA. That makes sense, right? We had um, on, on our credit section, then we had a four week credit boost. So again, it's a it's a it's focused on where you are on the website in the sidebar. Uh, your your CTAs. Uh, so this would be a, a a credit CTA. Let us let's match you to the the perfect credit tool and download our download our guide again in the sidebar. I've got a buddy Chris Abrams in the life insurance space. Here's kind of his general CTA. It just says instant quotes in the sidebar. But now he has this premium financing page for life insurance, and he changes the CTA. We did the same thing on on my site. If I was, if someone was learning about universal life, I'd show them a universal life insurance CTA page. Um, if they were over sixty, I'd show them. Look, I changed the image, I changed the wording a little bit, and and that helps you to convert better. Your welcome message. You can segment people by asking them. You know, maybe their earnings, or or their credit score, or how much they're looking to spend, things like that. Okay, so step six is you want to collect emails. This is this is huge. So again, in our sidebar, we had we had our four week credit boost, and we were able to to start creating a really nice email list. Uh, look, guys, like something like 98% of people are going to visit your site and never come back. So you want to have a way to to bring them back to your site. So that was an example of a general opt-in for our credit space. You can also do something called a content upgrade. So we had this one, um, this resource about a 609 credit dispute letter. So while you're on that, we, we had something that you could click on. If you click there to download it, we actually had dispute letter templates. So so whatever you're talking about, if you can give them a template of how to do that, or maybe a quick, you know, a quick checklist, something like that, you can get emails that way. Okay, um, did the same thing here on. I, I volunteer for this uh, religious blog where where this guy, uh, we offer a free video related to related to this religious content, and it works like gangbusters, right? Um, okay, how about Moneyball Multiplier? So this is going to be our last one. We're going to wrap it up real quick. Um, if you've seen the movie Moneyball, it's the one with Brad Pitt where he plays Billy Bean. He's the he's the general manager for the Oakland A's. This is at a time when their payroll was like a quarter of what the Red Sox and Yankees and Dodgers were all playing, but he makes it to the playoffs. So the way he does it is with numbers and analytics. So in, in, seven, in step seven, I'm going to just teach you – couple of my favorite tricks to get you more traffic and leads and ultimately more sales out of your site. So number one, I really like the Ahrefs tools. Uh, please check your keywords in Ahrefs. So remember I told you about the term versus whole life insurance calculator that, that I built. It was actually getting a few thousand visits per month, but it wasn't getting any leads. So I checked the keywords and I realized, wow, this thing is actually ranking for whole life insurance rates and, and whole life insurance calculator. And I wasn't even giving people the chance to get a whole life insurance quote. So what I did is I added the ability for people to get a whole life insurance quote on the page. And then it, it went from getting like no leads to being the number one lead resource on the site. Step two, check your page two rankings. So these are things, if you can see here, uh, position 11 to 20. These are things that, boy, if you just add 500 words to the page, a couple nice images, maybe a nice resource, uh, get a couple internal links to it, next thing you know, you could be on the first page. Check your click-through rate in, in Google Search uh, Console. So, so you can see your position here. Look for things that are maybe around the same position, and one of them is getting a much higher click-through rate than the other. That would tell me, look, these are both in about the same position on page one, 6.5, 6.4. 
why does this one have only a 6.3% click-through when, when other ones in that position have a much higher one? Maybe I need to work on my title tag for there. So, so that would be a, a last way that you could, uh, those are like three of my favorite tips for you to get a lot more out of your analytics. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want more tips on growing your traffic, leads, and creating online courses, please visit therisetothetop.com. Thanks a lot.